you know, they're not interested. If you're selling billions of dollars a product, you probably don't want to know if there's a problem. Um, but of course, the rest of the world is entitled to know. And um, so I think that's that's really a failure of the regulatory process that they, the regulators, the only people have the power to demand that data uh, and make it publicly available. And and clearly the regulators are, uh, are not interested or are not attempting to do that. We've slowly had, you know, anecdotal data come out on, on various uh, potential side effects um, and signals, you might call them, but they're only signals, you know, they're, they're not absolute right. proof because for absolute proof, you need a control group. Right. Um, and, and I can't emphasize that enough. So it doesn't matter how strong the signal is, you can still dismiss it and say, well, it may just be a coincidence. It may just be, you know, other things that are happening. It might be the infection itself. Um, and so you can get away with, with literally murder in, in a situation where there is no good control that you can use to determine is this signal a real signal or not a signal. And I, I, I do think there is a bit of a game being played uh, in that respect. Uh, but there are signals and those signals uh, are serious and, and they warrant uh, research and investigation, but it is made difficult by the absence of good control groups uh, and also I think still a fear of researchers, you know, that if, if they go in there and start asking these questions, that could be the end of their career.